everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and today I thought I would take you on a little tour of my Kickstarter profile. Um, I started Kickstarting in 2011, as you can see, with mostly just backing games projects. And um, over time, I've really learned some things about what to back and how to back things. Um, there are projects, uh, some of the first things that I ever backed are still not delivered um, through you know no fault of their own, but they seriously, um, as you learn, as you see, you really understand what to look for in a project to understand whether or not you will actually receive the end result and if that end result is something that you might like. So um, I am pretty proud of what I have backed, even games I didn't care for, I still think were pretty well done and received on time and so I've, I've been pretty happy with most of it. Um, surprisingly to me, or maybe even to you, of the 113 projects I have backed, um, not all of them are games. So I think that's a pretty interesting um, pie chart there. Games are 83 of my 113 projects, so that means 30 other things have caught my eye through Kickstarter. But I never would have gotten into Kickstarter without games being present. Um, if you do not follow me on Kickstarter, um, you may look up my profile at MaggieBot or if you are on my Facebook or would like to be, you can follow me on Facebook and that those help you, um, the Facebook tie-in helps you find people on Kickstarter. If you add me on Facebook, always send a message with your screen name and maybe how I know you, just in case we hadn't um, connected or I didn't know your real name. It's super helpful because <laughs> Kickstarter and uh, Twitter use screen names and other icons and stuff, and Facebook tends to be real names. Um, so if you look here, these are my active pledges right now. Um, these two are at the $1 level. I'll get back to that in a little bit. And there are two that were ending tomorrow, so I probably won't go super deep into them. Vanuatu Second Edition also has a rail game level that I'm backing, and Ave Roma Premium Edition looks amazing. It's like a worker placement game with a shared worker pool. Uh, a couple friends of mine have played it and sang its praises, so I will be looking forward to that. Um, the next one that is funding, though, let's talk about Anachrony. So, uh, Anachrony is from Mind Clash Games. They previously, the only other game they have on Kickstarter is Tricarion. They are currently at a bajillion dollars, $266,000, and it's a one to four player game with a time travel element and some big minis. Um, Anachrony. When I first saw this photo, I thought, okay, another overblown, overdone, just game that couldn't have been edited. So I did kind of ignore it. And then I saw Rado's video about it. Uh, Richard Ham did a video with his take on it. And from what I can see, the time tra travel element is just kind of a, a delayed resource management type mechanic, which is pretty interesting. Um, I find that uh, I really love that there are factions. It's kind of like if you wa uh, read the Divergent series, uh, there are different factions that um, you're kind of betting on. Um, for 20 extra dollars in this campaign, you may also get these giant mechs that help you kind of bring the theme home. Uh, your little scientist slots into the top there. Um, I definitely chose a path. I chose the path of progress because they look like librarians and librarians will eventually take over the earth. But I wanted to back the path of harmony, which is the tree people, but you know, you can't, sorry, the hippies are never gonna take over the world. I love the hippies, but they won't. Um, the game has some pretty slick graphics and uh, really nice that the rule book was already available when the site went up. Um, I probably won't play it on Tabletopia. I have yet to find a good time to play Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator. I've had a couple of fun experiences on both, but I just, I don't have the time. If I'm not playing games, I'm probably doing content, so I don't get the time as much as I'd like to play online. Um, the follower box is $59, and that's just the regular retail version, and then you can, for $20 extra, get a bunch of minis and cool stuff. Um, it does have a lot of expansion material already, which is not my favorite thing. I like base games, but from what I can tell, the base game is going to be plenty interesting and plenty long. Um, so next that funds, let's see, we've got on June 9th, One Deck Dungeon. So um, One Deck Dungeon is from Asmati Games. Chris uh, 
came up with this game with uh, multi-use cards, a dice chucking element, a dungeon delve element, and I thought it was sounding a little kind of overblown for what it was. Uh, the pledge level, I'm at is a dollar pledge because um, I have a prototype deck that uh, a friend picked up for me from a con, but it's only going to be $20, and my work is backing the Kickstarter at the retailer level, so I will just pick up a copy from work. It is a one to two player cooperative game. Um, in the game, you put out these doors that look like this, and each turn you kind of flip one over and you kind of deal with whatever the thing is. You can either run away or you kind of try and punch it. And if you punch the boulder, um, once you defeated it, you get to put it in as uh, either experience or a new potion or a new skill or new dice. You get to kind of decide where to put it onto your board. And as you go, you're d delving deeper and deeper into the dungeon, trying to get to the main baddie that you pick at the beginning of the game. Um, it's a pretty fun game. The art is, at this moment, all women, different body types, different ethnicities. I would say that they might have done this on purpose, um, because Asmati Games really is helping fight the good fight that all humans really want to game, and that they all really want to see a representation of themselves in games, and this glooping ooze is maybe the cutest thing ever. So I want this glooping ooze on a lunchbox or a hoodie or a print or something. Um, but I found this uh, campaign to be incredibly well done and incredibly well run. And uh, somewhere in the internet, so you can actually find me playing over Skype and having Chris move stuff around after I choose where the dice go and stuff like that. Um, next, uh, let's talk about boop, boop, boop. Uh, let's talk about OrcaCon, which is a little bit self-serving because this is a Seattle-based convention. If you can get to Seattle in January, or if you live around Seattle, OrcaCon is your best bet for an amazing tabletop con. This will be the second year. I was at the first year with a couple friends that came in from out of town, and it was very tabletop focused. For being something in Seattle, most things are kind of RPG video game split with a little bit of tabletop, and this is very tabletop oriented. OrcaCon is inclusive and has rules in place to help enforce that. It's pretty amazing. Um, next on that list we have Tramways, which is an easy back for anyone that I know. This is Alban Viard, AV Game Studios. Uh, he did Town Center and Small City and Clinique. Um, he makes beautiful games that are very unique, that have mechanics like no one else. The actual game is very reasonable, it's $49. Um, you can get some of these higher spots as he um, puts them out to help you name parts of the game. Um, the gameplay is really beautiful. The only downside to any Albon game, and this is true of all of his games, is that the mats, like the player mats and the boards and things like that, are going to be thinner than what you're used to. But it's so rare that you wear out a heavy game anyway that um, I would be more impressed than anything else if you wear out one of his player boards and then you deserve to buy yourself another one. So it even has a little thing that says, a unique game, but all his games are super, super unique. Uh, lastly, I think, on this was the one from this morning. Where is it? Uh, you can laugh at my slow internet. So this morning we had Trick of the Rails come out. So this is a Terra Nova game. They're out in Denver. Terra Nova has some other titles behind them, um, but I've not yet played any of their games. So um, five games under their belt is pretty good. They've got Cardboard Clothing, Far Space Foundry, Ophir, Guile. These were big titles at the time, but none of them really made an impact on my life, and I couldn't easily get them, so I just have not played any of them, but so far they have played a trick-taking game here with trains, stocks, and Hisashi Hayashi. If you were going to make a, a way to get Marguerite to back your project, those are the boxes that you would tick. Um, Hisashi Hayashi has done some incredibly simple but interesting games like Trains, Sail to India, Rolling Japan. Um, he really understands what elegant gameplay is and incorporates that into what he's doing and to put that into a trick-taking game is right up my alley. Um, 
of their campaign, what I would have liked to see is their stretch goals uh, spelled out. I don't care for this mystery stuff. I don't really care about it at all. I'm assuming this is a magnetic box, but I'd be way more excited about that if I knew what it was so I could help promote it. Um, I'm glad that it has a rule sheet and all, but I just want to hear stretch goals. I don't want to see the blacked out nothingness of them. Um, if I think that was all I'm backing at the moment, um, if you have a Kickstarter campaign that's important to you, learning about community and stuff like that, I'm, I don't want to take you guys on a tour of bad Kickstarters. I would rather highlight the stuff I believe in, but um, there are definitely some room to grow for other people on this platform. I love Kickstarter, so I hope that it continues to be helping the little guy get their game out when they don't really have the money to do it traditionally. And I hope that companies continue to move from kickstarting every game to only kickstarting games they can't afford and putting out their own games on their own dime because it does make a difference and it makes me feel a little more confident in a company when they can handle um, building their own games for a while because that speaks to a solid financial plan. Um, I will see you all next time and I hope you enjoyed this weird little new format. Yeah, bye.